From the iPhone 13 to the Galaxy S22, there are some amazing phones coming up. Here are the ones we are most excited about. So let's start with an obvious one, the iPhone 13. We're expecting Apple to take the wraps off its new flagship phone this September, so it may be that we do not have long to wait. Like the iPhone 12 series, we are expecting multiple models in the iPhone 13 lineup, including the base iPhone 13, the Pro, and of hopefully a more affordable mini version as well. We're not expecting huge physical changes to the phone beyond maybe a new sunset gold color and maybe a smaller notch on the front of the phone. Some rumors even say we might see the return of Touch ID somewhere on the phone, which would be great because, of course, now we're all wearing masks all the time, Face ID is a little more tricky. The cameras are supposed to be getting a pretty decent upgrade though, with particular improvements being given to the wide angle mode, particularly with night shots. Some rumors also suggest that we might see a better zoom system with much longer reaching zoom than the 2.5 times on the current phone. That'd be great as the iPhone does not come close to competing with the amazing zooms that you can get on the Galaxy S21 Ultra, and I really do love using zooms in my photography. There's also supposed to be a variety of new filters to help you get better color. In fact, according to the rumors, it is all of these camera features which are gonna be the biggest upgrades we will see on the iPhone 13. And as a photographer, I am totally fine with that. We're not expecting the launch of Samsung's Galaxy S22 series until next year. So it's perhaps unsurprising that there haven't been any massive leaks just yet. Historically, Samsung has launched its phones in February or March, but last year it launched its S21 line in January. Whether or not it does the same thing this time around remains to be seen. Like the iPhone, some of the biggest upgrades we're expecting on the S22 line are really focused around the camera. A teaser from one of Samsung's own social media accounts hinted that we might get the first phone with a whopping 200 megapixel image sensor. Such a huge resolution will likely go a very long way to improving the quality of those zoomed in shots, particularly if you're using the digital zoom at 30 or 100 times as you can on the S21 Ultra. Speaking of zoom though, the S22 Ultra is rumored to get a continuous optical zoom rather than having to swap between set three times or 10 times optical zoom levels as you currently have to. Beyond the camera though, we're not expecting any major upgrades, particularly nothing major changing in the design. We're confident that there will be a range of handsets in the S22 line, starting from the base model all the way through to the most high performance S22 Ultra. And it is the Ultra that we do mostly expect to get all of the camera improvements that I've already discussed. Now, Google has already shown off much of the detail of the Pixel 6, but it won't actually be on sale until sometime in October. That is something of a tease, of course, but we do know enough to be very excited about Google's next flagship. The Pixel 6 has some major camera improvements itself, including a new image sensor, which can apparently capture 150% more light. And as any photographer will tell you, more light means better looking photos, particularly if you are taking those shots in low light situations. There's also a four times optical zoom on the Pixel 6 Pro alongside a super wide angle lens. But one of the biggest changes is that Google is going to be using its own homemade Tensor processor inside the phone rather than using one of Qualcomm's chips as it has done on previous models. Google hasn't been specific about exactly what kind of performance upgrades we might see with its own chip, but it has said that we will find big upgrades to AI and speech recognition, as well as various types of computational photography improvements. The Pixel 6 will be among one of the first phones running the latest Android 12 software, and it's got some cool things on the Pixel that we are excited to use, including the ability to create entire themes for the phone's interface based on the dominant colors on whatever photo you set as the background. Sure, we are already excited about the Galaxy S22 line, but the S21 line might not be finished quite yet. We got the Galaxy S20 FE at the end of September last year, so it may well be that we get the Galaxy S21 FE sometime in the coming weeks or months. The S20 FE, which stands for Fan Edition, was the most affordable phone in the lineup and it mixed that affordable price with some great specs all round that made for a lovely user experience. 
I liked it so much I even awarded it a coveted CNET Editor's Choice Award. And that is saying something. Some leaked specs include a 6.4 inch display, a triple rear camera setup with a 32 megapixel main sensor, an in-screen fingerprint scanner, and fast charging. He is also hoping that Samsung can make the asking price even more achievable. Microsoft Surface Duo is a quirky dual screen device that CNET reviewer Scott Stein found to be a little hit and miss. It was an interesting concept, but underwhelming specs, some awkward software issues, and a general lack of apps that really take advantage of those two screens meant that we were a little bit underwhelmed. So what can we expect from its replacement? Well, some leaks have pointed towards an upgraded triple rear camera setup, as well as much improved internal specs, including 5G connectivity. Now that might go a long way to addressing some of the issues we had with the first model, but Microsoft will also need to address some of those software issues, including how buggy the first one was. Still, it is interesting to see more folding phone ideas, particularly as Samsung has just taken the wraps off its Galaxy Z Fold 3. That phone has a whole heap of upgrades and tweaks and changes that make it one of the most desirable folding phones on the market, so Microsoft will have to do a lot if it's going to compete. We expect Microsoft might take the wraps off the Surface Duo 2 sometime in the next few weeks or months, so we might not have long to wait to see what it's like. But what are you most excited about? Is there anything that I have forgotten to add to this list? Do make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below and make sure to keep it CNET for a lot more.